This is a demonstration tutorial explaining the integration process of Express Entry and OnGuard by Lanel S2. If you don't know what Express Entry is, we integrate into your existing OnGuard system. And what we do is we will pull all your existing cardholders, their badges, their photos, their access levels, their occupancy. And that integrates into our server software here on the left. And what we can then do is send that data to each handheld device that exists in Express Entry that allows you to do mobile access control from anywhere. A common scenario would be where we have a guard shack that enters a facility and you want to verify employees before they are entering inside. When a customer drives up, a guard just scans the employee's badge and you'll get an entry granted. So what we will show you today is how to do an integration with OnGuard. It's very straightforward. We'll kind of go through the system administration side. We will set up the panel and the readers that we need. We'll set up the access levels. I'll show you how the synchronization works from the OnGuard side. And then we'll do some scans and we'll see the activities show up back in the alarm monitor. Everything's going to be pretty straightforward here. There's a few components that we need to look into pre-setup. Keep note that Express Entry itself does require to be installed on a Windows machine. That can be installed either on the same machine as OnGuard, as I am doing here on my demo system, or it can be assigned to its own dedicated VM. There is a license part number that is required via Linnell S2, so please reach out to your VAR or OnGuard Linnell to get that license applied to your system. In the OnGuard system, we have a few components that we need to set up. We're going to first go to our access panels from here. We have two ways of setting access panels. If you are running OnGuard 8.0, we have a device translator module that you can install that will allow an Express Entry panel to be created. But if you don't have that, if you're not running 8.0, that's okay. We will show you how to set up a panel regardless. What this panel is going to allow us to do is to set up readers that will map to each handheld device. You can kind of think this as a virtual panel per se. You can choose any type of panel that you would like to create. In this case, I'm going to create an LNL 2220, and it's going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to do add here. We're just going to call this Express Entry Panel. The workstation, we're just going to, you just set your local machine name, and we do need to choose a panel type, 2220. And then for the primary connection, we're going to change the connection type to direct. You can use IPv4, but direct makes it a lot easier. This needs to become three for me. And we'll set that to our default monitor zone. And do make sure that the panel is online. And that's all we'll need to create the panel. So again, this is not a physical real panel. This is just a virtual panel that we're going to use to create readers. So see here on the next step, I'm going to go to access control, readers and doors. And as you can see, we have a bunch of readers that we've already built for another panel here. But we're going to create a new one this time. We're going to click add. We're going to do an in read and an out read. We're going to do building reader in. We're going to associate that to our panel that we just created, Express Entry Panel. We're going to select the type. Type does not matter, but we will, I will choose some default options if you don't know what to select. So we will select 1320. The output will be a Wigan prox. The port will be defaulted to starting at address 0, reader 0. Our reader modes can be set to card only. And our card format, we just need to select one. It does not matter which one you select. So do keep in mind that everything with the type, the output, the reader modes, and the card format, these are just default values that are required to save the reader. But this info is not pulled over into Express Entry. If you don't know what to select, do just choose the default values here. Once you have this, let's press OK. And that will save our reader, building reader in. We're going to add one more reader. We're going to add an out reader just by highlighting, as you see, it copies all the settings. And then we will do building reader out. So now we have our in and we have our out scans. Oh, in this case, because I am using a dual interface, I do need to bump up the reader number to one. So that will create our two readers that we have building reader in, building reader out. The next thing to look into is to make sure if you have areas in your system to set the area appropriately. For building reader in, we're going to enter on an entry scan. We're going to go into the global inside area. For this scenario, we'll do a don't care. We're not going to use anti-passback. So we'll use a soft anti-passback in this case. And just press OK. And then for the reader out, we'll modify that. And this one's going to lead you to the global outside area. And same thing, don't care. Once you have the reader assigned, the next important part is to assign these readers to your access level. So we're going to go to access control. We're going to go to access levels. 
And I already have a few. I'm just going to add it to the all access group here. I'm going to modify it. Besides building in, building out, we're going to set always. And that will now be a part of that access. So we're good. So anybody now with an access level will get granted access. From an on guard perspective, that's really the main setup that is required. There is one more item to connect now. So when we go to our users, we have set up a couple of different users, but right now we are using just a system account. But in the, in the case of you creating a new user for login purposes in, for the open access API, you can either create a new user here or you can use a system account either or whatever works for you. Most scenarios, we would definitely recommend setting up a new account. In this case, I am using the system account that's already set up. And the important part here is that the permission groups for a standard user, such as this SA2, would be set to system admin, card holder admin, and monitor admin. The reports and field page don't matter too much, but you want these higher permission by default. If you want to break down and limit exactly what info the API can get, you will need to go and configure your cardholder permission groups and your monitor permission group to grant access only to that data that's required. Once you have your permission groups set up, I'm going to go back to our system account. You're going to make sure that there's an internal account set up. This internal account path, username and password is going to be what you're going to use to log in from Express Entry into Open Access. Make sure you keep note of what this account is. Once you set the password, it is very common for the first time you create an account for OnGuard to prompt you to first change the password on first login. Do log out and then test your login here in system administration just to make sure that the password is set appropriately. Once you have everything set up here in OnGuard, we're going to jump to Express Entry. So from the main application, you're going to go to Tools, you're going to go Settings. That will load first to the general page. Here on the left are all our options. We're going to go to Data Manager. And let me explain a little bit of what our data managers are. Our data managers are how we are able to connect to our different integrations. Once we enable our data manager, you can see the different types that we have here. We can select all the different ones, but in this case, we're going to be selecting the OnGuard data manager. Once you have selected OnGuard data manager, click on the top right, set of data manager. And this is where all our configuration settings will be assigned. So here on the left, under the basic section, we are going to select and input all our OnGuard server, our internal account that we just looked up and set up, and then we're going to select the directory and some other options here. As you can see, we do have data conduit and open access. Data conduit is, has been phased out by Linnell S2, and all integrations moving forward are utilizing open access. Our remote computer name, this can be an IP or a host name. I am adding our OnGuard machine here. So this is a local machine, but I am putting in the full host name as you can use either or. Our username, I am using the SA account, so we are using username SA and then the password that we have assigned for it. By default, you will want the enable data protect to be checked, and that's just to secure the password within the application that you're inputting here. You can ignore all the data conduit settings here. And on the open access, the very first time you set up an Express Entry system, this directory box here will be blank. If your host name is resolving and it can talk to the OnGuard machine, when you click this drop down menu, you should always see an internal option and any other directory options that you may have assigned in OnGuard itself. Because we are using the internal directory, we are going to use the internal login. You do have the option of using single sign on with a active directory account, but typically we do recommend for ease management that you would just use an internal account. But if you have any questions, you can let us know. Some other default settings that we'll want to uncheck is we don't want to use the OnGuard hazard safe areas if you don't have that set up. And we do want to have the software events enabled. So these are all your general settings. There are some other settings that we can go into, but not to, we won't go into that today. All that will be in our documentation. But we do have some advanced settings such as segmentation, fingerprinting, other items that we pulled over. With that, we're going to do a test connect. We're going to look for a status of success. So it does say here at the bottom, open access connection success. And that just means, hey, our login is good. We're able to communicate over the API over to OnGuard. And we are ready to continue with our synchronization. So from here, we're going to press OK. And let's check a few settings before we press Save. So we're going to go to Sync Options. And these are all the settings that we're going to want. 
Trigger data manager activities is going to be when you scan a card holder on a handheld, it's going to make sure to send that data to OnGuard right away once it hits the server. So you'll see it as an activity on alarm monitoring. If you are doing mustering, or if you want to check occupancies from OnGuard, make sure the pool data manager occupancy is checked. For same with the pool data manager activities to express entry. So if you want them, the card holder activities to come in, we can monitor the data from OnGuard just like that. If you want data to push back to alarm monitoring, also have the push express entry activities to data manager checked. And then for the bottom two, I recommend these to always be checked. So watch tables via software rents and enable message queue. This is going to allow us to get all your real time events for cardholder changes and occupancy changes in real time, which will allow us to keep track of all updates that are required day to day from OnGuard. So with that said, make sure you press save after you editing all this in a second, and we'll see if it's successful. You'll see an open access uh, connection success. And the very first time after you have a successful message, we're going to run a full sync. So as we run the full sync, it's going to go through and it's going to pull the relative data that we have in the system. It's going to go through the access levels, the card holders, their photos. And then at the very end, it'll go through photos and it looks like we are done. And so if we look through the data for our ad ad info, this is where you'll get all the data for all our fields that we pull in. You'll see all the card holders that I am pulling from OnGuard itself. So you can tell that these are OnGuard profile because of the external record that's shown in red above. For the administrator that is local to Express Entry, as you can see, there is no text field up there. These records come from OnGuard directly as I go through a few of them here. If we go through our groups, we do have the all access. So this all access is a local default express entry access group. But as you can see, same as before, if the external record is above, this one is coming from OnGuard itself. And if you look here on the right, you can see the two readers that we've added to the access level is here on the right. And so we should be good to get proper granted access from scans of people who are in the same access group. We our zones, these are going to map to the areas. So we have our global inside, global outside that we've created. As you can see on the inside, that one's set to a hazard area. So that way, if people are in this area, we know that this is considered a area we need to muster from. And our global outside, so we have our outside. And this is also set as a muster point. And this is somewhere we will not monitor if there is an event. The next important part is to create a door. The way Express Entry works is that we use a door system, which maps to your areas and your readers that you've created in OnGuard. So in this case, we're going to create a building door. Click Add New. We're going to call this Building Door. And our starter and end zones are going to match what we set in OnGuard. So our start zone, in this case, is going to be our global outside. This is where we are starting in before we do an ingress scan. Our end zone, once we get a successful scan, will end up in the global inside. So for entry mode, you're going to go from global outside into global inside. And then for exit mode, it'll be the opposite. You go from global inside to global outside. And then the same with the mapping for the external entry reader. So this is saying when you're doing an entry mode scan, we're going to scan as if we are mimicking the building reader in access levels. And then for the exit read, this will be for the building reader out access levels. This is very important. This is how the handheld is going to define the door and the readers that it's going to validate against. With that, we're going to press save. And now we have our door set. The next important one would be the readers. This shows you all your handhelds that are connected here at the top and we have multiple readers set up and these are all the readers here at the bottom left of the readers that we are pulling in from OnGuard itself. The same if you see an external record in red that means it is coming directly from OnGuard and we do have a few hand for set up here that are not. So now that we have the data sent over I can press the menu on the handheld device so this handheld on the right side of the screen. I'm going to press the menu on the top left. We're going to go to set door and now we should see our building door. So here it's at the very top. I'm going to select building door. I'm going to go back to our main screen. So now you can see entry mode, door, building door. This says, okay, if anybody who scans here on entry or exit mode, they are going to be marked into invalidated against this building door, which is going to be our building in reader. So if I scan a badge, we're going to get an entry granted. And then if I do another one. We'll get our entry granted. So you'll see here, and when we do an entry granted, we do see the two activities. You see the time and zone is very recent for both Blake and James. Time and zone is there. You'll see an activity log here at the bottom. And then if we go check alarm monitoring, we're going to go alarm monitoring. We're going to main alarm monitoring. You'll see actually the two activities that we just created. So you'll see here, 
we have Blake who is coming in and 746 and they came in we scanned them roughly at the same time but you'll see the controller the panel that they're set up to the device and that they're granted access so what happens if we scan them you'll see them in live time if I come back to the handheld device and I scan one more time you can see the activity comes into alarm monitor very quick assuming everything's online the moment the handheld does the validation, it sends the data to the Express Entry server. And then in turn, the Express Entry server will send that activity into OnGuard and you'll have that activity logs. If you're only using Entry Exit Mode, you do not need Express Entry to run in the front end. It just runs as a background service and all your activities will show up in alarm monitoring as a standard door reader would. That's all you would need to monitor. Same thing would work for Exit Mode here. So if I was to exit and get your exit scans, now you get your building reader out. It's pretty straightforward. What happens if somebody gets denied access? So we will test somebody with the denied badge. Oh, this person, Sarah, she's expired. As you can see here in alarm monitoring, she does get a denied access. She tried scanning into the building. She got a denied access that will get logged as a standard denied access field. So that's pretty much it for kind of an entry exit perspective. Let me show you what we do for Oh, let me, let's scan people in first so that way they are in the facility. I'll go back and... Okay, so people are inside. We're going to do a switch mode. All our modes are enabled on their device at the same time. And we're going to switch to muster mode to just kind of see how muster mode works. So the very first time we open, we click yes. It's just going to set our default zones that we're going to monitor. And we only have the two entry scans. And the idea is that as these people are they're inside the building, they're marked inside the building, they're going to be added to our missing list. And throughout the day, these two individuals will be moving in and out of the building and they will reflect properly on the missing list. This missing list is kind of like a live list of data and card holders that are in and out of the building at any given time. This list is dynamic. It will change as people are coming in and out. What happens is during an evacuation, fire drill, real evacuation, tornado, whatever it may be, the idea is that all the employees that are in the facility will go to the mustering location. So if that is outside of the building, the idea is that the muster coordinator would pick up the handle device, they would go out to the muster point, and you would just need to start scanning everybody in their badges as they come in. Very straightforward, just like we saw in entry exit mode. As long as you're just scanning their badge, they will come in, you'll validate them, they'll get a muster success. You may have noticed that during the muster success that Blake came over from missing over into the scan list pretty much instantaneously. So now she's accounted for. She is now not in the missing list anymore. She's been accounted for. If I come to the scan list on, this, on the handheld, she's now in the scan list. When there is all this connectivity, if your devices are communicating to the server by either Wi-Fi or cellular connection, the data is going to update in real time. Let's say James came out to the muster point and he forgot his badge. You can do a search for him, and if he's on the list and you see him, you can select him by clicking on his profile, and you can see it's first going to do a check. You want to validate, you know, give or take if it's the right person that you're validating, and if it is so, you press submit, and that will also muster him. And as you can see, it's very, very instant communication. Everything gets logged pretty much right away. By the end, your goal is to have a missing list of zero. This is not going to be a perfect scenario every time because maybe you have an employee who went out to lunch, they forgot to scan out of the building before they exit or wherever it may be, but this will get you as close to zero as possible. That will give you a lower count of you know potential people who may be in danger during a real evacuation. We have a list of our scanned people. Once this is done, we're going to do finish. This will save the report of who's missing, who scanned, and we're going to do okay. That resets the mustering of it. And this concludes our walkthrough of the integration with Express Entry and OnGuard by Linnell S2. If you have any questions or would like to learn more about our products, please feel free to contact our help desk at Talaris.com. Thank you for watching.